This world is not what you think it is. This world is not what you think it is. Oh, oh. We'll turn this place into a karaoke bar. Oh, man, that's the best idea since they faked the moon landing. Okay, cut. Wow, Neil Armstrong. Hey, wait a minute. You're supposed to be on the moon. I just saw it on TV. Oh, there's a, 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 a tape delay and a, with all uh, solar winds. <laughs> It begins with a single lie, just one small step away from the truth. But that small step can lead deeper and deeper into a web of deception until the only way out is to face a truth far worse than any lie. There were six alleged moon landings between 1969 and 1972, and there's been zero moon landings since. Seems a little suspicious, doesn't it? Well, that's because we never went to the moon. Let me prove it to you with 13 reasons why the moon landing was fake. Why would America fake the moon landing? Well, at the time, the US was in the heat of the Cold War with the Soviet Union, and the space race was important because of the fear that the Soviet Union might weaponize space by putting missile launch sites on the moon leaving the U.S. defenseless. Now, the U.S. had already been beaten by the Soviet Union in putting the first person into space. They asserted their dominance over us like the dog whisperer putting a hostile rescue dog from Tijuana in its place. But if we could be the first to the moon, then we'd be the new alpha dog in the world. But in this case, what creates the alpha dog isn't the size of the fight in the dog. It's the size of the lie in the dog that's in the fight. Thus, the U.S. became the new alpha dog when we were the first nation to fake the moon landing. The U.S. government also faked the moon landing to distract the public from the Vietnam War, which wasn't very popular. It's like if I'm doing something you disapprove of and I can distract you from it, then you don't notice your disapproval of the thing I'm still doing. Look over there, a moon landing. Now let's look at some hard evidence. The flag waving in the wind. Now take a look at the astronauts proudly planting the American flag on the moon as it gracefully waves in the wind. There's just one problem with this. There's no wind on the moon, Einstein. Evidence of a hoax. No dust kicked up on the lunar landing. Take a close look at the lunar module. You'll see there's no dust on the foot pads and it didn't leave a blast crater either. This would be approximately like diving into a swimming pool in your car and not making a splash. Guess what? The moon's surface is covered in dust. It's not like landing in a Walmart parking lot covered in pavement. So it would be impossible to land on the moon's surface without kicking up a dust storm. No stars in any photos. There are no stars in any photos taken from the moon. Now, were the stars just blotched out by the intense inner city streetlights that are on the moon? Or are there just no stars visible from the pretend moon inside of a Hollywood soundstage? I don't know. I'm just asking questions here. Pictures have the same background. Look at these two photos. Two different locations on the moon, but each have the exact same background. Looks like the set designers got a little lazy and decided they'd go with the same background for two different fake locations. The crosshairs. Crosshairs were etched into the lens of the camera the astronauts were using, yet in a number of photos, an object allegedly on the moon appears in front of the crosshairs. This is foul play. The only way an object could appear in front of the crosshairs is if the object were superimposed on the photo. Fake photos trying to fake a real moon landing. Competing shadows. There's one source of light on the moon. It's called the sun. Yet some photos have shadows going at two different angles, suggesting multiple light sources, which suggests studio lighting, which suggests not moonlighting. Not to mention photos where the astronauts are backlit by the sun, yet you can still see the detail on front of the astronauts. Hashtag studio lighting. Now, even getting to the moon alive would be impossible because of the Van Halen radiation belt. The Van Allen radiation belt. No one could survive the trip through this intense radiation belt that surrounds the Earth. Can a cat survive being put in a microwave? No, which proves astronauts can't survive being put through the Van Allen radiation belt. Buzz Aldrin doing his best Mike Tyson. Now, in 2002, Buzz Aldrin punched a reporter who was denying the moon landing ever happened. Quite the reaction. Seems like old Buzz was feeling a little insecure about something, wasn't he? 
Now, how did the US fake the moon landing? I've got two words for you, Stanley Kubrick. He was hired by the government to direct and film the fake moon landing inside a Hollywood soundstage. And he could never tell the truth because if he did, they would kill him and he knew it. That's why in his 1980 movie, The Shining, he revealed the truth through a trail of secret messages. First, take a look at the kid Danny, who obviously represents Stanley Kubrick himself in the film. He's wearing an Apollo 11 sweater, which tells you Kubrick was Apollo 11. Next, take a look at the scene involving room 237. Room 237 obviously represents the moon because it's approximately 237,000 miles from the Earth. And take a look at the room key. It says room no 237, which means no moon. Plus, if you take the N from the word no, use it to replace the R in the word room, then flip the word backwards, you've got the word moon. And then after Danny enters the forbidden room 237, which represents the moon landing that took place behind closed doors, his sweater is tattered and he has marks on his throat and he won't tell his mother what happened. This represents NASA's stranglehold on Kubrick to keep silent about the moon landing hoax. The cases of Tang by Jack's head in the storage closet correlate to Tang being on the Apollo missions and how the truth is supposed to be kept in the closet. We could also then reason to believe that the psychotic break of Jack Nicholson's character is Kubrick's portrayal of what the pressure was like of keeping such a huge secret for so long. And some would even say that the whole movie was Kubrick's way of apologizing for being a part of the biggest lie in human history. Stanley Kubrick's whole intent of The Shining was quite poetic in nature. Let the truth live beyond him. And indeed it did. Kubrick allegedly died in 1999 of a heart attack. Yeah, not very likely. It's more probable the government finally got their eyes wide open to how Kubrick spilled the truth about the moon landing 19 years earlier in The Shining, and then decided to execute the do not talk clause in their contract, if you know what I mean. So NASA, we haven't been back to the moon for nearly 50 years. Why is that? And NASA's like, uh, yeah, uh, in the past 50 years, technology's actually gotten worse. Yeah, the experts say human knowledge is doubling every 13 months. And yeah, your smartphone has more computing power than all of NASA's computers combined in 1969. But aside from all that, technology is actually getting worse, making it impossible to go back to the moon. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty much our airtight reason for why we haven't been back to the moon for 50 years. And all follow-up questions will be answered with the term budget cuts. You know what, NASA? I don't buy into your Cold War winning, deceiving the American people propaganda. Moon landing? Fake. Oh, and by the way, the Earth is flat. If you want to watch my video proving how that's absolutely true, click here. Hashtag Flat Earth. Welcome to the 21st century. The Earth isn't round anymore because it never was. Because it's flat. Let me enlighten you about the Flat Earth Theory. You can see here what the Flat Earth really looks like. The North Pole is actually in the center of the flat disk Earth. And Antarctica is a 200 foot tall wall of ice that surrounds the entire perimeter of the flat Earth. It's not some land mass at the bottom of an imaginary globe. There is so much deception and misunderstanding that hides this truth from people. You can totally prove the Earth is flat when you research flight patterns. For example, on October 13th, 2015, a flight from Taiwan to LA a woman's water broke. She gave birth, so they had to make an emergency landing. Where do you think they landed? Alaska. If the Earth was round, they never would have landed in Alaska. Because according to this flat map of the round Earth, you can see that they'd have to go further out of their way to land in Alaska compared to just going to LA. Why did it land in Alaska? Because if you look at a flat Earth map, you'll see that Alaska is directly in between Taiwan and LA. There's no explanation for this other than the fact that the Earth is flat. I think it's cute that some people think the Earth has curvature to it, but I can disprove these ideas in a heartbeat. If the Earth was round, you couldn't see anything in the distance because of the curvature of the Earth. Things would be lower than your eyes. They say the globe is spinning at a thousand miles an hour. If that were true, we would all fly off. And then they say, well, gravity is what keeps you on. Well, gravity isn't even a real thing, so it's not what keeps you attached to the globe. Gravity is just an anecdotal wet dream of Isaac Newton. You can't even prove that it exists. And that proves that it doesn't exist. 
Gravity was just a ploy to validate his false theory that the Earth revolves around the Sun. And we don't fly off the spinning globe because it's not spinning. And it's not a globe. I'll set you straight on this. The Sun and the Moon are the same size. The Sun isn't 93 million miles away and 400 times bigger than the Moon. They look the same size because they are the same size. It's the ultimate trickery. Wrap your head around that. The Moon is actually a self-luminating translucent disk, not even made out of solid matter. And I'm offended if you think we ever actually landed on the Moon. Magellan allegedly sailed around the world, circumnavigating it, if you will. But he was going in a giant circle the whole time, not going around the globe. From 1519 to 1521, the stupid son of a bitch was making a giant left-handed turn the whole time he was sailing. That's what made him think he was going around the world. He didn't even know how to sail in a straight line. Pictures of the Earth from space are fabricated by NASA. They're full of irregularities because they keep trying to change how they want you to think the Earth looks. Look at these two alleged pictures of the Earth from space. They're completely different. Like, do they just think I'm so dumb that I wouldn't notice the irregularities? These photos are frauds put out by NASA. What's most wrong in this world is NASA, Copernicus, Galileo, and all their heliocentric propaganda. Copernicus was a Freemason, and so is everybody at NASA. And Freemasons want to keep you completely in the dark about what the true shape of the world is. Why would they want to fool you into thinking the Earth is round? I don't know. And that's why it's so scary. Be sure to flatten your world by subscribing to my YouTube channel. John Glenn, two-time U.S. Senator and one of NASA's first astronauts, was a lying Freemason, just like his heliocentric forefathers from Pythagoras to Copernicus, Kepler to Cavendish, along with most all of NASA's astronauts. Buzz Aldrin Jr. is an admitted ring-wearing, hand-sign-flashing 33rd degree Mason from Montclair Lodge No. 144 in New Jersey. Edgar Mitchell is an Order of Demolay Mason at Arresta Lodge No. 29 in New Mexico. James Irwin was a Tihon Lodge No. 104 member in Colorado Springs. Don Izell was a member of the Luther B. Turner Lodge No. 732 in Ohio. Gordon Cooper was a Master Mason in Carbondale Lodge No. 82 in Colorado. Virgil Grissom was a Master Mason from Mitchell Lodge No. 228 in Indiana. Walter Shearer Jr. was a 33rd degree Mason at Canaveral Lodge No. 339 in Florida. Thomas Stafford is a Mason at Western Star Lodge No. 138 in Oklahoma. Paul Weitz is from Lawrence Lodge No. 708 in Pennsylvania. C. Fred Kleinecht, the head of NASA during the Apollo program, shortly thereafter became Sovereign Grand Commander of the Council of the 33rd Degree of the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry of the Southern Jurisdiction. NASA astronauts Neil Armstrong, Alan Shepard, William Pogue, Vance Brand, and Anthony England all had fathers who were Freemasons as well. The amount of astronauts known to be Freemasons or from Freemasonic families is astonishing. It is likely that more astronauts and people of key importance in NASA are affiliated with the Brotherhood as well, but not so open about their membership. For there to be this many Masons, members of the world's largest and oldest secret society, involved with the promotion and propagation of this globalist heliocentric doctrine from its outset to modern times, should raise some serious suspicion. Before the first Apollo missions ever even cleared the launch pad, 11 NASA astronauts died in highly suspicious accidents. Gus Grissom, Roger Chafee and Ed White were all cremated together in an Apollo capsule fire during a completely unnecessary and dangerous test where they were strapped down and locked into a 100% oxygen chamber which incinerated the three of them to death in seconds. Seven other astronauts, Ted Freeman, Charles Bassett, Elliot C., Russell Rogers, Clifton Williams, Michael Adams, and Robert Lawrence died in six separate airplane crashes and Ed Gibbons in a car crash. Eight of these deaths were in 1967 alone. So many astronauts coincidentally dying under such circumstances is highly unlikely and lends credence to the idea that these were intentional hits by the Masons trying to find the right people to sell their hoax. One of the most outspoken of the fallen astronauts was Gus Grissom. By 1967, Grissom had become increasingly irritated and vocally negative about NASA's chances of ever landing a man on the moon. 
he stated the odds were pretty slim and famously hung a lemon on the Apollo capsule after it repeatedly failed safety testing procedures. Grissom threatened to go public with his complaints about the LEM and even told his wife Betty, quote, if there ever is a serious accident in the space program, it's likely to be me. Right after his murder, government agents raided Grissom's house before anyone had been informed about the fire or his death. They removed all his personal papers and his diary, never to be returned. From 1969 to 1972, the Freemasons at NASA claimed to have landed six of their Apollo missions on the moon. With this ingenious deception, a bit of rocket technology, a bunch of lying Freemasons, and photographs taken through a round window, with this one PSYOP, NASA managed to convince nearly everyone on Earth that they live on a spinning ball. However, in the documentary, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, you can watch official leaked NASA footage showing Apollo 11 astronauts Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins for almost an hour using transparencies and camera tricks to fake shots of a round Earth. They communicate over audio with Control in Houston about how to accurately stage the shot, and someone keeps prompting them on how to effectively manipulate the camera to achieve the desired effect. First, they blacked out all the windows, except for a downward-facing circular one, which they aimed the camera towards from several feet away. This created the illusion of a ball-shaped Earth surrounded by the blackness of space, when in fact it was simply a round window in their dark cabin. Neil Armstrong claimed at this point to be 130,000 miles from Earth, halfway to the moon, but when camera tricks were finished, the viewer could see for themselves the astronauts were not more than a couple dozen miles above the Earth's surface in a high-altitude plane. These images showing a globular world soon became the Freemasons' most valuable tool in altering public perception about the shape of the Earth. Since the original so-called blue marble image, NASA has provided the public with many more pictures and videos showing a globe Earth, touting veritable photographic proof that Pythagoras' 2,500-year-old theory was finally validated. When seen with a skeptical eye, however, professional photoanalysts have dissected several NASA images of the ball Earth and found undeniable proof of computer editing. For example, images of the Earth allegedly taken from the Moon have proven to be copied and pasted in as evidenced by rectangular cuts found in the black background around the Earth by adjusting brightness and contrast levels. If they were truly on the moon, and Earth was truly a ball, there would be no need to fake such pictures. When NASA's images of the ball Earth are compared with one another, the coloration of the land and oceans and relative size of the continents are consistently so drastically different from one another as to prove beyond any reasonable doubt that the pictures are all fake. NASA has many alleged photographs of the ball Earth which show several exact copy-and-pasted duplicate cloud patterns. Cheeky graphics artists have even placed things like faces, dragons, and the word sex into cloud patterns over various ball Earth pictures. One recent Pluto picture clearly has a picture of Disney's Pluto the dog layered into the background. A lie is a lie, and it don't matter how many dumb sheeple believe it. And the truth is the truth, hiding right out in plain sight, and still people don't see it. Man, this shit got me heated, and I won't stop till the elite are being defeated. They keep us deceived about everything that we think, and they keep it a secret. What we're taught is not conducive with reality. Big bang, evolution, and there's gravity. I tell the truth, and then these motherfuckers laugh at me, telling me the earth is photoshopped because it has to be. Most people accept the deception happily, but what they're doing to us all is a tragedy. God created the heavens and the earth in the first, but we're living in a limits on the galaxy. They say we're monkeys on a ball flying through outer space But there's no proof it seems to have vanished without a trace NASA and other agencies falling down from grace You can take that bullshit pseudoscience and get out my face I'm the anti-social type, you're a government prototype That's why you make it a point to tell me that I'm crazy every time you're angry cause you know I'm right I'm standing outside the house of cards about to watch it fall No more living on a cartoon ball Horizon means horizontal Indoctrination is awful Because you're taught the glow bottle Ever since y'all could crawl We follow rapists and murderers Liars, thieves and sun worshippers Saying we can't see curvature Cause we're all so small And though it's never been proven They say we're ripping and shooting The earth is spinning and moving Oh no, no, not at all It's a criminal enterprise Where deception intensifies Nassau's got us all living life On a cartoon They say that we went to the moon six times, but pure BS 
us is the way that smelt Now they're telling us that we can't even leave the planet because of the Van Allen radiation belt Yeah, uh-huh, okay, sure NASA, what you lying for? You lying? Now you lied before I can't take this anymore The only thing they took to space was your imagination Fake aliens are coming, now they have you waiting We need to do something about it, no procrastination Trying to cause the masses to awaken, that's the path I've taken But you can see if you check all the percentages So many people having cognitive dissonance But that's what happens at the loss of your innocence Then you get involved with all of this wickedness They try to do all the humans this way So are they just idiots who is to say Conditioned by the television that makes your decisions, opinions, and you just obey Stuck in the material domain of Satan Where everything in each and every day is vacant Mandela effect cause the game is changing People waking up and now the cage is shaking The earth is flat and that is a universal fact If it isn't that, then tell me where the fuck the curve is at They tell us that we can't see it because we're all too small And now we're spinning on a cartoon ball Horizon means horizontal, indoctrination is awful Because you're top the globe model Ever since y'all could crawl We follow rapists and murderers, liars, thieves and sun worshippers Saying we can't see curvature Cause we're all too small And though it's never been proven, they say we're ripping and shooting The earth is spinning and moving Oh no no not at all It's a criminal enterprise where deception intensifies That's Welcome to the 21st century. The earth isn't round anymore because it never was, because it's flat.